Hi everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. I apologize, I don't know what the lighting and visuals of this is going to look like. I'm in a slightly different space, but because of what I wanted to do, it's hard to do in where I normally do the filming. So hopefully this will be okay, it's just very sunny outside for once. So, this video, I wanted to do a virtual unhauling, weeding, whatever we want to call it. It was actually something I saw on, oh, what's her blog name? I think it's called Mel to the Any. I'll link it down below. She goes to her Goodreads shelf every once in a while, picks the want to read shelf, and then switches it so you see the books in like the oldest ones come first, and then picks like the top 10 that the oldest ones and decides if she wants to keep it or she wants to unhaul it. And I thought that was actually probably a good idea because my want to read shelf is nearing 500 again <laughs> on Goodreads. And I'm pretty sure I did a, a slight cleanup, like, I want to say last Christmas-ish or so. I don't remember what the number was before, but if it's at 500 again now, I think we need to talk. <laughs> Now I'm automatically going to exclude any of the Outlander books on there because I have read them. I just never used Goodreads while I was reading them. So they're just on my want to read and I haven't like officially reviewed them yet. So those I'm going to keep on there. But I think it's actually going to help me like evaluate of like, okay, I know it sounds good, but you are you ever actually going to read this? No, Sam, you know you're not going to. The book is 10 years old. You don't own it. And you forget about it every time you go book shopping. So that's what we're going to do. I think I'm going to pick the top... 15 or 20. We'll see how quickly I can get through these. So it's actually not as bad. I think my, my, my cleaning last December did a good, a good, a good job. The oldest like date I have is January 9th, 2015. That's an Outlander book. So the first five are actually Outlander books. So like I said, automatically just not included in that. So the first one I added on August 9th, 2016 was The Imposter Queen by Sarah Fine. I actually think I own this one. I'm I'm gonna leave this because I do own it and I have several times thought about putting it on my TBR. It just got pushed because it doesn't have an audiobook I don't think and the cover's not super duper pretty. But I know that the rest of the series, I think the third one just pretty recently came out. So I'm okay with leaving that on there for like another year. If I do this again in another year and it's still there and I haven't even attempted to put on a TBR, we'll talk. We're going to keep that for now. So the next book is The Girl Who Grew a Galaxy by Sherry oh, Dimaline. I don't think I said that right. This is a book I added on August 9th, 2016 as well. I remember adding this for work and I have borrowed this book from the library, I think like two or three times now. And I just got it and was like, awesome, threw it on the shelf and then forgot about it for three weeks. It's, it sounds kind of cool, but I just don't know that I'm ever actually going to read it. No, unfortunately, no. I think we're going to delete it, unfortunately. I mean, I, I know of it for work reasons, at least. So in the future, if I do change my mind, then I'll at least remember it that way. I already feel very cathartic just deleting one book. <laughs> so the next book that I have on here is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sip I don't know how to say her last name. I'm sorry. The cover's right there. I added it on December 7th, 2016. I know this is a World War II fiction, which is probably why I have delayed reading it so much. So that's one that I've got to be in a very specific mood for my heart to be torn up and to read about that stuff. I'll leave it on here for now. So the next one on here is Shadow Cry by Jenna Burton Shaw. And I added this on December 21st, 2016. I think I actually own two, if not three of these books. Delete. I honestly don't remember what it's about. I had honestly forgotten that I owned them at this point. I don't think I've ever tried to put them on a TBR. So the next book on here is Fierce Reads, Kisses, and Curses. This is a what's it called? Is it anthology? Where you, several short stories from different authors bound up. Oh, uh, I do own this book and it's signed, but it got came off a of book outlet. It's one of the authors I've never heard of before. Oh, wow. It has a 3.37 stars on Goodreads. Uh, it's been on there for almost two years now. I'll leave it just because it's anthology. So everyone has different tastes about anthologies and I'll look, I'll, I'll evaluate that once again. If it's here in a year and I haven't touched it, we'll talk. The next book on here is World of Ink and Shadow by Lena Coakley and I added this on December 21st, 2016. It has a 3.62 on Goodreads, which isn't great. I think I actually got this in an Owl Crate box 
or I heard about it in an owl crate box so I bought it on its own. I think one of the reasons, I, th I I'm fairly certain I've put this on at least one TBR so far. I think it's because it didn't have an audiobook and if it doesn't have an audiobook it automatically I'm like I gotta find time where I don't work for several days. <laughs> I really like the cover and I can deal with the lower score in historical fiction sometimes. I feel like that's a heavy uh, genre that's very very personal taste based. We're gonna leave it for a year. Oh, I forgot about this book. So the next one on here is A Thousand Nights by E.K. Johnston. I added this on December 23rd, 2016. Mm, oh, I don't know. I want to support Canadian authors. Oh, I'm pretty sure I know this. I'm fairly certain I don't own this book. I own the sequel, Spindle. Hmm. I'm going to exclude the rating aspect evaluation in this evaluation just because I really do like E.K. Johnston's writing and I think her other books that I have read like that inevitable Victorian thing didn't have like amazing ratings too but I really ended up liking it. I'll give it a year. I'm probably gonna see if I can borrow this book from the library and I'm pretty sure her stuff normally has audiobooks as well so I can switch back and forth. Okay we'll leave it for a year and we'll come back. So the next one on here is Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sip, the woman who wrote Salt to the Sea up above. I don't own this book and I think the only reason I put it on here was like two summers ago the Sync Audiobook for Teens program that gives out the free audiobooks in the summer had this as one of them, but I think I downloaded it onto a device that I no longer have. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, it's about Soviet Russian. Oh, okay, we're keeping that. Didn't realize. <laughs> I just thought it was like some World War II, um, like a Holocaust memoir or something like that. I'm going to keep this one, actually. I think that's the first time I've actually probably fully read the summary. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this for sure. Not just for like another year. I know I'm, I'll eventually get to that one. So the next book on here is The Martian by Andy Dwyer. This has been on here since December 23rd, 2016. I remember several times attempting to go to the library and borrow the book or place a hold and it was probably like right around when the movie came out because I had never heard of it honestly before the movie and the line was just massive like just atrociously large like like it was not gonna I probably would still be on hold for it by this point if I had placed the hold in December 2016. I just honestly don't think I'm ever actually gonna read it. Yeah we're gonna delete. I've lost track of how many we're up to. So the next one is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, the first book of the Mistborn trilogy. And I added this on December 27th, 2016. It has a really good star rating. I debated actually for a while on if I was even, I have the, the original trilogy. I was debating for a long time if I was even going to keep them because I found out afterwards that he has some personal views which I'm not um, totally comfortable financially supporting. I mean, I kind of already did by accident. I didn't know that until after I bought them. But his views are interesting. Specifically, he is the one that wrote, I think on a blog post, that he he himself is Mormon, so spiritually he doesn't believe in uh, same-sex marriage. However, he made some point of like, but spirituality and legality is totally different. They should legally be allowed to get married. And that's where I'm like, oh, okay. I don't... Mm -mm. I mean, I can appreciate that he was able to separate the two. I'm going to give myself one more year to attempt this. If I don't attempt at least the first book of the next year, I'm tossing the trilogy. The next book on here is The Warrior Era by Cinda Williams Chima, and this was added December 28th, 2016. I have somehow never managed to read a single Cinda Williams Chima book. Uh, my brother's actually, I think, started reading this series as well. I own one of the books in her other series, but then they did a stupid mid-series cover change from like the amulets to stupid people on it. So I'm not going to continue buying that series. Mm. Okay, I'm going to keep the warrior air on here for a year. I'm going to give myself a year to track down a copy. I think there are audiobooks of this one as well. I'll, I'll see. And I'll talk to my brother and see if he ended up enjoying this one. The next book on here is one that I've actually been thinking about. So that's a good sign. It's called The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. I was gifted the first book. I've heard some really good things about his writing. It's a big book though. I'm pretty sure I tried to read it and I got distracted by something else and I was just like, I'll get back to it later. So I added it December 29th, 2016. I don't think I received it until like within the last 12 months or so. I'll give myself another year and then reevaluate and see if I've made any attempts to touch it. 
Then there is Princess of the Midnight Ball by Jessica D. George. I had honestly never heard of this book until about 20 seconds. But looking at the cover, I'm fairly certain I do own it. <laughs> I added this on December 31st, 2016. When I was younger, I read a lot of, oh, was it? I think it was Carolyn, Carolyn Myers who wrote like, um, um, Bloody Queen Anne, Beware Princess Elizabeth, like all those like tutors drama. And I probably would have enjoyed that then, but I honestly don't know that I'm gonna read it. Let's be real, I'm not gonna read this. Then there is uh, The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. I added just January 4th, 2017. I'm gonna keep that. I'm just trying to catch up on Rick Riordan. That's why I haven't gotten to it yet. The next one is Winter Song by S.J. Jones. I added this January 13th, 2017. I just honestly don't think I'm gonna read it. So we're gonna we're gonna ax that one out. The next one on the list is Article 5 by Kristen Simmons. I forgot about this book. <laughs> I added it to my shelf on January 27th, 2017. I own the actual trilogy. I think my thing is it's a dystopian. Pretty sure I remember reading the summary though and being like, that actually sounds really cool. It sounds like kind of a political thing as well, thrown in with the dystopian aspects. We're gonna keep it for a year. We'll see you in a year. Next one is The Marked Girl by Lindsay Kingling, Kling, Klingil. I don't know. I added it January 29th, 2017. I know I own this book. I remember buying it and putting it on my shelf and I've literally never thought about it since. So we're going to delete. The next one on here is Winterfell by Kate Borman. I added this January 30th, 2017. I think I own the first two books. I bought them off Book Outlet. So they're mixed matching in format. I like that this is a Canadian author, but... I've just looked at it a few times and read the summary again and been like, eh. All right, we're gonna delete. I'm sorry. All right, and we're gonna do one more. I'm not sure how many we're at to. I'm sorry if we've gone over. I'm sorry if you find this kind of boring. I find it very cathartic to do weeding. It feels wonderful. And the last one on here is The Sarina's Legacy by Jennifer Lamb. This once again, it's a historical fiction. I know that. It's got like a 3.4 stars on Goodreads, which isn't great. I added it on January 31st, 2017. I'm pretty sure this is one that I was like, oh, I mean, I need $45 for my book outlet cart to be free shipping, but I kind of want to read this anyways. Hmm. So once again, historical fiction, I'm not going to worry about the rating. I've seen people like One Star the Book Thief and Night by Eli Weasel. I'm fairly certain I died a little inside when someone made some review on Night. I can't remember where the review was. I don't even know if it was on Goodreads. But on Night, there was a review that was like, this story is ridiculous. And I was like, he lived this. What is wrong with, oh my good Lord. I remember also seeing someone rank on Goodreads, the book thief of one star saying, I read the first three pages and didn't like it. And I was like, you read three pages of the book thief and felt that you were entitled enough to rate it. All right, back to the Serena's legacy. I'm going to keep this for a year and evaluate. That is this video. I hope if you don't have any weeding of your own to do that this felt good. I feel very good. I feel much less stressed. What's my Goodreads want to read shelf number at now? 452. So I got rid of nine books. I'm actually quite happy with that. And make sure to check the description down below. I will link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.